pain is meant to wake us up. People try to hide their pain, but they're wrong. Pain is something to carry, like a radio. You feel your strength in the experience of pain. It's all in how you carry it. That's what matters. Pain is a feeling. Your feelings are a part of you. Pain. We all understand and have faced pain in our lives. It motivates us and terrifies us. It drives us forward and backward. Pain is an experience that humanity shares across centuries and across cultures. It helps us find common purpose. The collective experience of anguish through history can create a common sense of identity and help us define who we are. But is the experience of pain as universal as it seems? Does one person's injury elicit the same feeling as another's? In short, it doesn't. Each of us experiences pain in our own unique way. Pain and suffering are deeply personal. The physical experience of injury and the way that we bear it are dealt with separately in the brain. And yet, they are linked. Galen described the physical nature of pain, and he identified nerves as the structures that carry the signal to the brain. Ibn Sina recognized that we can experience pain both with and without an underlying injury. Galileo Galilei recognized that pain is personal. We each experience it based on the quality of our sensory organs, our past experiences, our interpretation. Together, these approaches over 1,500 years inform our understanding to this day. We've just managed to fill in a few more of the details along the way. We react to pain in different ways, and the treatment of pain must be as individual as we are. In an attempt to provide a more objective approach, scientists have developed numeric pain scales. It's an objective approach for what is a very subjective sensation. But there is no pain formula. X amount of injury does not equal to Y amount of pain. Pain is our radio, tuning into the inner workings and injuries of our body. But at times, we pick up a signal where there is no apparent injury, when the source of the broadcast is unknown. And we all carry our pain in our own way. So how then do we perceive this sensation? It all starts in the peripheral nervous system. Throughout our entire body, receptors called nociceptors can respond to mechanical injury, changes in temperature and inflammation. Two types of fibers carry the signal to the CNS. A-delta fibers are fast and are very good at quickly and accurately localizing sharp pain. C-fibers are slow. They are responsible for that lasting dull ache that stays with you at times long after the initial injury. When the fibers enter the CNS, specifically the spinal cord, the modulation and personalization of the signal begins. With every synapse, there's an opportunity to either enhance or suppress the information. Arguably, pain and suffering divide here. This allows for pain processing to be dynamic and rapidly adjust to our behavioral goals and needs. When pain stands in the way of our survival, we may suppress it, but we can also enhance it to protect ourselves. These first synapses happen in the posterior horn of the spinal cord. Neurons then cross the midline and ascend as part of the anterolateral system through the spinal cord and brainstem to reach the thalamus. 
The world is always too much for us. The noise of all these sensory signals can overwhelm our cortex's ability to deal with it. And we need to filter the signal from the noise. We need to fine tune our radio. The thalamus is the ultimate arbiter of what information reaches our cortex. Pain is the signal that will always cut through the noise because it's important. Survival takes precedence. Let's look at the lateral system, which is how we localize pain and gauge the intensity. The primary somatosensory cortex, here on the lateral aspect of the forebrain, is in the postcentral gyrus, posterior to the central sulcus, in the parietal lobe. From here, projections to the sensory association areas in the parietal lobe will help provide context. And here, on the medial aspect of the brain, are the structures involved in the emotional, affective, and visceral response to pain, the suffering. It's the medial system. From the thalamus, projections to the anterior cingulate cortex connect to the prefrontal cortex and subcortical structures, transmitting, then encoding our suffering into areas of the brain responsible for behavior. Interestingly, functional MRIs of the brain have shown that the anterior cingulate gyrus is active when we see other people in pain. Seeing someone else in pain appeals strongly to our humanity. It moves us to want to soothe their suffering. One of the most difficult things is to see a child in pain. The crying and the grimacing are all obvious signs of suffering. These are our direct, unfiltered emotional responses to pain. This is the amygdala in action. In this deep dissection of the temporal lobe, you can see the amygdala. The amygdala is an important nucleus for fear. Pain is scary, and this fear can trigger immediate, even irrational, emotional reactions. Memories on how pain occurred stick with us because they're physical and emotional. The hippocampus and the amygdala are important for forming these memories and will help us remember the context in which pain occurred. When we're hurt, we change our behavior. Connections to the cerebellum and the basal ganglia harness the urgency of pain into a more adaptive response. We protect painful areas through changes in posture and movement. Or, at times, we can change an entire behavioral pattern so that we don't get hurt again. Pain is also visceral. It can raise our blood pressure and heart rate. It can make us sweaty or nauseous. Direct projections to the hypothalamus here influence our visceral response to pain. While we can separate a lateral and a medial system in both structure and function, pain and suffering remain at the core of our human experience. This individualized and integrated pain experience is due to the activation of a network of structures, the pain matrix. Some aspects of pain are difficult to explain. At times, we find no physical cause, or the cause and its physical and emotional manifestations appear unrelated. The suffering is no less real though, and the imperative to care and respond to the afflicted remains the same. The understanding and the management of pain is a balance between our direct empathy with the person suffering and a scientific approach to the underlying causes. This requires our empathy as much as it requires our intellect. <laughs>